The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was to come, Jesus gave them this answer. The coming of the kingdom of God does not admit of observation, and there will be no one to say, look here, look there. For you must know, the kingdom of God is among you. He said to the disciples, a time will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man and will not see it. They will say to you, look there or look here, make no move. Do not set off in pursuit. For as the lightning flashes, flashing from one part of heaven lights up the other, so will be the Son of Man when his day comes. But first he must suffer grievously and be rejected by this generation. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus in the Gospel invites us to recognize that the kingdom of God is among us. It does not admit of observation in the way in which we usually think about it. So some kind of extraordinary phenomena that you can say, look there, look here. The kingdom of God is among you. Perhaps it's easier to understand if we think of the more biblical sense of the reign of God. So when we speak of the kingdom of God, we're speaking about the reign of God being established. And how do we see, how do we recognize the reign of God among us? How does it unfold in our everyday lives? Well, through our acts of love and kindness, through the way in which we live. That in, in small and big ways, in our everyday lives, we are helping to build the kingdom of God. We're helping to bring about the reign of God as our relationships come into a right ordering. And so, right relationship with God, with each other, with ourselves, a right way of caring for God's creation, being good stewards of what has been entrusted to us. That example comes out quite well in our first reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon, which we perhaps don't, I may not be very well aware of, but it's a very beautiful letter. And in this, Paul is writing to an Onesimus, and he's saying to him that there's this runaway slave that you have. Sorry, he's writing to Philemon about Onesimus, who is this runaway slave. And Paul is saying, I met Onesimus, and where did I meet him when I was in chains, when I was a prisoner? And now I'm sending him back to you because in Christ, if, if we are people of faith, then the way in which we relate with each other should make a difference. So in other words, what Paul is doing is speaking about that how can we live with the, the reign of God spreading in, in your very midst? Well, here's your opportunity. I'm sending this Onesimus back to you who had run away and treat him as your brother, not as a slave anymore. Treat him as your brother. Welcome him as you would me, Paul says. But if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, then let me pay for it. So Paul is saying, not just treat him, as, treat him as you treat me, a dear friend. So this is the way in which the kingdom of God, the reign of God, brings transformation to our everyday lives. Now that's very difficult in the kind of world in which we live because what we see worldwide is more and more extremism happening in terms of political realities and social realities. So that center positions become more and more rare and the extremes become quite flooded with people and ideologies and you see more and more hate being perpetuated. So for instance, in, in the, the last few months that, that we've seen with the Americans in, in their elections, etc., what you see are two different sides, but you see a lot of violence. On one side, you see the, the extreme group of Antifa, and the next side, you see the extreme group of Proud Boys, etc. And there's nothing that can happen and come of that. I was reading an article from um, the Witherspoon Institute this morning, and they were commenting someone who actually went to various rallies that both groups held and did this investigation and looked into why is there all this hate? Why are all these people really just rejecting each other? And what he discovered was interesting that in the midst of it, they actually did, weren't really aware of what each other stood for. It was, it was this kind of mass movement that built into hysteria. They weren't even aware of, of what each other was thinking and, 
and the truth behind it all. So you had different kind of ideologies floating around and something that, that is present in our world today called confirmation bias. That kind of reinforces, this is what I suspect, and it reinforces it and reinforces it until it makes you come out in a position as hateful and, and angered and therefore violent. And we have to be careful because we ourselves experience the way in which we, we can experience a violence moving in the midst of our own relationships. The social unrest, the tensions of our time, the ways in which there's so much division, the scarcity of, in the economy. All of this can lead us to a way of being self-centered and forgetting the other. And how does the kingdom of God unfold in our very midst? What is the call that we have that Jesus is saying it's not about look over there or look there. It's in your lives. It's happening as we live, as we seek to, to push back against a self-centered, narcissistic kind of culture. As we seek to move beyond just giving from what is our excess and giving where it hurts. As we seek to care for each other in ways that say we belong to one human family. And what Paul is saying to, to Philemon is, in baptism, this is your brother in blood, the blood of Christ. And as Christians, the blood of Christ that unites us must be stronger than family blood. And if we don't believe that, then we have a problem. Because in God's eyes, we are one human family. And the blood of Christ has to mean something more. And what we face therefore in our world is a kind of crossroads in the midst of tremendous crisis, of course catalyzed by the coronavirus and the pandemic, that forces us to examine our social living. How are we living with each other? How are we caring for each other? How are, what, what, is, what is there in, our, in the back of our minds? And it's pushing us to see, well, where do I stand in the midst of these extremes? And how will I care for others? How do I want to be cared for? Paul gives us a tremendous example. Take him back, not as a slave, but as a dear brother. A dear brother. He says, I am in chains that the good news, to help me while I am in chains that the good news has brought me. However, I did not want to do anything without your consent. It would have been forcing your act of kindness, which should be spontaneous. So Paul is saying, I don't want to send him back and you feel it, it, this is forced on you. Because of our Christian living, this should arise from your heart. A natural desire, you know what? Let me take him back. You know what? Maybe that neighbor that I can't stand, let me go and talk to them a little bit. You know what? That person that I haven't, that I always put out of my, as it were, my field of view, or that friend that I've, I've hurt, or who has hurt me, you know, quite often we think about who has hurt us, but we never think about who we have hurt. Maybe I should say a prayer for them. Do an act of kindness. Wish well for them. You know what? I probably should watch the way in which I become an agent of perpetuating violence and division by watching what I say. Because when our word goes forth, we don't know the ramifications in the end and how it changes. The kingdom of God is among you. The kingdom, the reign of God. And it is happening in as much as our own hearts experience a conversion and a transformation that God desires. And it's beyond our friendships. It's in our workspaces, the kind of relationship that exists. Yes, there's a Christian way of managing a business. Yes, there's a Christian way of being a politician. Yes, there's a Christian way of being a teacher. Because if Christ means anything, it means everything. There is no sphere that is devoid of Christ. When Pope John Paul II in his inaugural speech as Pope, what did, what did he say? He said, open wide. In, actually, in, in the Italian, he says, fling open. Fling open, spalancate. The doors, the windows, everything to Christ. Because everything is under his dominion. All economy, all politics, every single thing in the world. And therefore, there is no void in our lives, no space, no matter what we think, that is outside of the reign of Christ. And if we could understand that, then, as Jesus says, the kingdom of God is among you. But, but, whilst we labor in the tension that we feel between 
what we know we should do and the call of the gospel and where we are at and that tension that is our conversion story, that's our lifetime, asking for his grace and his help, we do know that what he says is true as it was then now, that the Son of Man will suffer, continues to suffer grievously and be rejected by this generation. Because the message is a difficult one, but it invites us to live as sons and daughters of God. Amen.